Professor Hilgert, dir Professor Schipper, dir Wolfgang Schuster, dear Kollege Leverenz, ladies and gentlemen, these students, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our fourth international, oh sorry, dear Kollege, <laughs> Uh, it is my, my pleasure to welcome you to our fourth International Academy. And Herr Leverenz, thank you so much for allowing us to work in this temple of science again. We are very experienced here. So far, there have been summer academies uh, in which we discussed and worked on diverse heritage themes. Due to our very, very, very extensive program in this summer, uh, this time we have planned a winter. Academy. I hope the winter does not overtake us. What has overtaken us is the reality in view of our theme. The massless destruction of heritage is more current than ever and more monstrous than one would have dreamed. Concepts for conflict solving against this type of destruction do not yet exist. There are approaches on how one can work with the affected population in these conflict regions, but that's it. There are programs for reconstructing destroyed heritage. Professor Hilgert has, for example, launched such a program in collaboration with the International, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Since many years, Professor Schipper is working with the Hague Convention in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Syria, everywhere in the world in this region. When we designed our academies, we found ourselves at the very beginning of our ambitious project to position the heritage studies disciplinarily with its diverse approaches and components. Our paradigmatic approach was to design heritage studies in the interest of human development. We intended to expand the post-colonial approaches of Laura Jane Smith and others in critical heritage studies in order to include the perspective of sustainable human development. The background of our concern was the recognition that through the popularization of the World Heritage Convention, the issue of heritage protection and heritage use, particularly with regard to the world heritage, was no longer seen as unreservedly positive over the years, many, many critical questions were raised that had to be answers. Sorry. The questions were, example, were, for example, directed towards the problematic effects of the commercialization of the heritage of humanity, such as the trivialization of the heritage values or identity building. What also had to be questions, qu questioned critically were the experts of UNESCO and ECOMOS and their so-called authorized discourse selling point, namely that only they are qualified and authorized to sustainably protect heritage. Last but not least, the causes and effects of the destruction of heritage were questioned. Sorry, I'm a little bit... <coughs> Last but not least, the causes and effects of the destruction of heritage were questioned, as was the role that UNESCO played in conflict preservation, for example, in times of, in times of war and conflict solving. Strategies to provide appropriate measures for the heritage of humanity in danger have been absent altogether over many years. Every heritage contributes to identity and awareness building. Heritage can therefore, as always, be seen as a process of transformation of the values of societies of the past into the present and into the future. This process always includes social development. And exactly at this transformation of the meaning of heritage for social development in the interest of humanity itself, is where we placed our concept of heritage studies and of our academies. We hoped at the same time to be able to take <coughs> into consideration the problematic developments in the implementation of the convention in social practice. 
so much for the funding concept of heritage studies and of our academies. As I said, the ISAC is the fourth event. Another special feature of this academy series is that it aims with its themes at a professional international audience, which just as the IGS Heritage Studies would like to further develop the theoretical discourses on the subject of heritage as well as strategies for possible new discipline. The claim of heritage studies to a disciplinary status is a relatively <coughs> recent phenomenon. Although many political positionings of the U United Nations community have been published in the con context of UNESCO's Convention for the Protection of Heritage, theoretical foundations for the possibilities and limits of sustainable implementation and effects are largely absent, and that's a problem. Among the few available are the, are the writings of the classics of the discourse, such as those from Lord Arisipe and the Global Commons, or those from Barbara Kirschenblatt-Gimlet with the title Theorizing Heritage. Newer publications with contributions from anthropology to heritage studies come from Helene Silverman. By the way, she is one of uh, the person presenting here in our academy. And she's also a member of our, in the board of our series of heritage studies. So the post-colonial reflections in the field of heritage studies in the books of the archaeologist Laura Jane Smith were already mentioned. That means for the positioning initiated by us of heritage studies in the interest of human development that we had to identify and work out the challenges associated with the paradigm that the heritage discourse faces. That concerned concepts such as heritage and sustainability, participation and community involvement, concepts of sustainable development, the empowerment of stakeholders, or conflict, causal research, and solution processes. In other words, themes and focuses that we took up, discussed and reflected upon as part of our academies as well as a resulting publication form the basis of our understanding of heritage studies. With this in mind, we worked on the theme constructing heritage in the light of sustainable development in the first summer academy. Somebody here who attended that? No. Um, the topic and the focus of this academy were the topics and the focus of this academy were connected to the activities of the UNESCO World Heritage Center on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the World Heritage Convention. The analysis of exactly this topic was chosen to motivate the heritage community to address, in theory and practice, the challenges of globalization pertaining to the sustainable protection and sustainable use of heritage. When we started to reflect upon this theme, we were very much aware that sustainable development is not possible without including local stakeholders. In that first academy, we therefore wanted to go a step further and propose the hypothesis that mankind's heritage is both representative of and a tool for human development and that human development is not possible without the participation of actors within their own development. Our publication, Understanding Heritage Perspectives in Heritage Studies, can thus be seen as a result of our first academy. Understanding Heritage Perspectives in Heritage Studies is a mirror of that we initiated with this academy in the summer 2012. The Cottbus Declaration on Heritage Studies, with entitled The Need for a Holistic Understanding of Heritage, was the agreement adopted by all participants and the content basis for further developing research in the field of heritage studies, as well as for publications, but specific, uh, especially also for continuing the series of summer academies. 
Subsequently, the second Summer Academy in 2013 was devoted to the theoretical approaches for the understanding of sustainability in heritage studies <coughs> and its foundational guidelines. Also for this second academy, we had already formulated the paradigmatic basis with the Cottbus Declaration on Heritage Studies in 2012, and we published it in the first book. This academy, in this academy, our objective was to further, to further advance the scientific identification of the broad constructions of heritage and sustainability under the condition of globalization. This concerned, for example, the protection and the use of heritage in consideration of worldwide migration or growing tourism, regardless of heritage type, tangible or intangible, irrespective of status, whether world heritage, local heritage of ethnic groups, or specific traditions, our concepts of heritage conservation, etc. The impacts of globalization on the heritage of people concern people themselves. In several respects, in fact, they pertain to tangible and intangible goods of people as well as their appropriations directed by diverse and differing and different interests. <clears throat> they pertain to people's constructions of heritage and the dynamically changing cultural and social processes. Also integrated, this is the third publication, into the overarching theme for the Years World Heritage Convention, popularizing the protection of cultural natural heritage, the diverse results of our first and second <coughs> academy were published and thus made available to the international public. As part of the focus of our academies, it was logical to work on more gaps in the heritage discourse. So it was with the third Summer Academy in 2014, with the inclusion of participation and empowerment in the preservation and use of heritage. The publication for that Summer Academy is still pending, with our further experiences of these themes by means of various conferences. We are, however, now ready to tackle this publication. With our current thematic focus, conflict-solving strategies in heritage studies, we did not just want to further develop heritage studies, we wanted to explicitly deal with the real conflicts that threaten the heritage of humanity. Therefore, the ISAC 2015 will contribute to the identification of heritage-related conflicts, to the elaboration of innovative, multi-level approaches for solving them. As a fundamental component of conflict-solving strategies, ISAC 2015 will take into consideration the interest of various authorities, institutions, organizations, and other actors. We will discuss the subject from theoretical perspective with the interest of enlarging our understanding of heritage studies including approaches from social, political, technical sciences, as well as from humanities. At the same time, we will develop practical, context-based tools that will enable different stakeholders to achieve mutually satisfying decisions related in questions related to all aspects of heritage protection, use, and development. ISAC 2015 covers five thematic areas. Now it comes. The first one. Conflict-solving strategies in the context of historic urban landscapes. The background is that the past decades have seen a number of serious disputes arising from heritage sites worldwide, particularly in, rela in relation to historic urban landscapes. The authenticity and visual integrity in this type of site often becomes compromised by the construction of new high-rise building or traffic infrastructure and by rapid city growth and gentrification. The speakers will discuss the reasons and effects of such developments and will seek possible solutions towards the enhancement 
of communication between different actors, which can facilitate <coughs> decision making in relation to urban policies, planning and management of historic urban landscape. The second topic is cultural landscapes in conflict, challenges and solutions. Cultural landscapes present a complex phenomenon expressed in both the tangible and the intangible components, given the speed and scope with which cultural landscapes develop and change in the modern world. They often become battlefields of interests between various stakeholders <clears throat> whose conflicting agendas impede the balanced and well-informed decisions with regard to their protection and use. The speakers will look into the possible causes and effects of conflicts in relation to cultural landscapes and will discuss the tools that can be applied for solving such conflicts. I'm not sure whether this is possible, but at least we need to discuss this. Third is heritage in the event of war and terrorism. Abundant examples of destruction of cultural properties in the event of armed conflict and terrorist attacks over the past decades demonstrate that heritage presents a highly sensitive target. The speakers here will present examples of heritage involved in war action and endangered by possible terrorist attacks. They will elaborate on the background and the impact of these destructive activities and will discuss possible solutions in the context of heritage. Let's be aware whether this is possible or not. The third one, next one, is climate change and natural disasters as challenges, challenges, challenges for natural heritage. Apart from armed conflicts and terrorism, there also exist other long-lasting and highly hazardous factors that jeopardize the safeguarding of the world's natural heritage through the conflicts they attract. <coughs> These include climate change and various natural disasters, which have far-reaching implications for societies worldwide with effects on social relations and economic activities. Speakers will discuss the causes and effects of these hazards and the world's natural heritage and the tools for their mitigation. Last but not least, we have the heritage impact assessment as a tool for solving strategies. The heritage impact assessment lies in assessing the impacts of the threats to heritage properties from various large-scale destructive developments, as well as of inappropriate constructions, renewals and demolitions that do not take into consideration the original layout and fabric of these properties. Heritage impact assessment also assesses the threats related to natural heritage such as changes and land use policies. The speakers will present here examples of successful implementation of heritage impact assessment in different heritage contexts and will discuss the ways in which it can contribute to the alleviation of conflicts between various stakeholders involved in the protection and development of heritage sites. You can see we once again have very high expectations, and I'm convinced that we will meet our expectations. I thank you for coming and look forward to two interesting weeks. Thank you.